Hi, this is Robbie from Southern California. And today I'm gonna to talk about my strawberry fig tree. Well, I'm gonna try because this bird that is screaming in front of me in the tree is a California thrasher. He has been here and let me tell you something, he can sing and scream for hours. Notice there's no birds here right now. When he comes here, he chases everybody away. Well, he's got that crazy long beak that is kind of frightening when you look at him because it's something that frightened me. The story is I was sitting here one day filming and he popped into the view of my camera when I did not expect it. I was, let's say, recording something else. And it kind of made me jump back because it was like, whoa, what is that? I had never seen one before. And the first place I ever saw one was right here in my bird garden. Now he's parked himself up there and he sees a scrub jay, but he doesn't, he's not bothered too much by the scrub jay up there because they don't eat too many of what he is protecting. The California thrasher is protecting the figs. He wants the figs. They're ripening now. They're fantastic. He's eating them off of this tree. We've got another few trees around. He's eating them. I guess I can't talk over him. The more I talk, the louder he gets. But he is letting the other birds know, especially other California thrashers, that he is here and this is his territory and his property. I can tell you the story on the figs. I had planted some figs back there at one point. Some of them were cutting, some had come up from seeds and I moved them around. And we've got two trees left here that we keep. One is just fantastic. It grows beautiful, sweet figs. The other one on the other side the first time I picked a fig from it, and these were all grown here, it felt like I was eating strawberries, like I took a big bite out of strawberries. So I've got both fig trees going. Unfortunately, the strawberry fig had fallen, and Gary was gonna take it out, but of course I told him, no, 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 do not take it out, because that is a fabulous tree. And with fig trees, let me tell you, they are the easiest tree to propagate. I propagated one for my daughter and now she's got a big fig tree in her yard. Propagating fig trees are wonderful. Growing from seed can be wonderful and may not be wonderful. You could end up with a massive tree with beautiful looking figs, but it won't mean that they're good to eat. Keep that in mind. We had some that of course looked a little dry and you couldn't eat them and you saw the figs didn't look good. So we dumped those a long time ago. But you get a couple of them where the figs look fabulous on there. You pick them and they're no good inside. When I say no good, they don't have any flavor and they're actually very dry and that's what you don't want. If you know somebody that has a fig tree that you happen to like, all you have to do is cut a branch off. So here is the one fig tree. I can't get back any more than this. That is a beautiful fig tree and it tastes great. But the one that fell down, look how this fell. That is the strawberry fig. It fell down and then started growing up. It is full of figs. Unfortunately, as soon as they start to ripen, that bird gets them. But I'm gonna grab some cuttings off of it and get this fig tree growing in other areas. But I will have to admit, this one is a good fig tree too. It just isn't the taste of strawberries. You, you're kind of just a regular fig tree, but this is amazing. Look how big they are. Let's see if some of those are ripe, and I'm gonna grab some cuttings. Oh, the wind is blowing. Look at the wind. Okay, let me get this done. Weather keeps changing on us. So there it is, it came off of this branch, and there's another fig there. So I'm tasting this one. I'm trying not to fall down the hill, and it's sketchy right now. I'm gonna taste this one, and if it's good, I'm gonna pull off of this limb. And this way I know 100% that this limb growing up it's got the fig that I want, and I'm pretty sure it does. Isn't that gorgeous? Let's see, hang on. Mmm, that's it. Okay, so I'm gonna take off of this branch. Now they may all be the same, but you know what? That is 100%, because this way I'm cloning the branch that I like, even though I've, so far the whole tree has been good. Okay, I'm gonna finish my fig and get some branches. So here is a cup. Now I've got potting soil in here as well as some soil from other totes 
that in other words are already broke down. You want it loose because you want to be able to push it down. And here's the three branches that I cut. Normally I actually do cut thicker branches, but everything is so covered in figs. I did not want to cut the figs off. Now you don't need to have the whole leaf. You just want a little bit of the leaf because you want it to start to develop roots. Now you could use this and let me see, see how long they are. Cause see how long the pot is. So I want to push it all the way down and I think that's pretty good. All right, so I'm. this is how easy it is. You're just going to push it in. And if you feel like you can't push it in enough and you need a taller pot, you could go taller. I think I'm going to cut a little bit more off of this because we don't need it that tall. Okay, now I'm going to push that in there. Let's see, I'll probably cut a little bit off there. It's probably going to root around here. Same thing here, we don't need the whole leaf because we want it to concentrate on roots, but you want to leave a little bit of green growth. There's another one. And then here too, we'll take it to about here. Same thing on this, you can just cut part of the leaf. Some people think you have to take the whole leaf off. You don't have to take the whole leaf off and just cut part of it. Now this has got a milky sap. I'll tell you something about that because a lot of people are highly allergic to it. Then push it in, make sure it makes really good contact. You can compost all this. I have a little compost bucket here, I'll put it in. And the other thing I want you to do is for about three days, sit it in some water. This way you know it's gonna make really good contact with the water and the stem. And once you know that it's holding water really well, then just make sure you water it every day and then put it in a shady location because if you put it in the sun, you can lose it. As far as the sap, this is the milk. For some people, it's it can cause a rash. It, and it does for me sometimes too. Now I'll tell you, the figs that you pick also have the milk, but I have found out that if you pick figs completely ripe and you're they're ready to pick, there's no milk on it. There's no sap coming off. When you pick it and there's a little bit of milk, that means it wasn't ripe. That's probably nature sending the signal for animals. They don't touch it until it's ripe. And once it's ripe, it is safe and it won't have the sap. Now there's gonna be some animals that are gonna do something anyways, but that's what I have found with the fig trees around here. So if you snap them off and you see milk dripping, it's still good to eat. It's probably still sweet enough, but it, probably had another day to go. But when you snap off your figs and there's no milk coming out, that means they're at their prime and they usually taste wonderful there. So I hope I gave you some tips on how to propagate and make sure, you know, I can add some more soil in here. Let me do that. Cause I want it, I, I really want it to the top. It settled as it got wet. Cause you want it to make really good contact with soil. That's why at this point, you don't want it lumpy, full of leaves and branches. You want just good sifted soil. And now just find the shaded spot. And for now, I'll leave it on my propagating table. I would definitely do three or four short ones, eight inches long. Put them in a pot of well-drained soil and then keep them watered. Now, let me tell you what works for me. I put them in a pot. And then I, and usually it's even an old food container, sour cream container or something. And then I sit them in a tote. You don't want to put your fresh cutting in the sun. So put them either under the plants that are growing in a tote or a flower pot or container, or put them somewhere where they're getting indirect sunlight because sunlight at that point for a new cut fig tree, you know, a branch will dry out. The sun will dry it out. But if you put it in the shade, it will work fantastic. It, I mean, it's just, just find a nice shady spot in direct sunlight and keep it well watered. It does, you don't want it underwater. You want to make sure that soil doesn't dry out because the tender roots will dry out quickly. So that's why you want to make sure it's well watered. You can put it on a windowsill. But for some reason, the way I do my containers and I throw in all the leaves and matter from around the yard, whatever, you know, branches and vegetable plants that I that are browning off and I'm throwing in there. You know how I do my gardening. There's something in there that makes the plants grow, the propagating plant that I'm doing grow. So you have a well-drained container with your sticks in there. You could put 
four sticks, five sticks, because once it starts to grow, you could separate it and then you'll have multiple plants. But if you take a cutting from a tree you like, you know that that is going to be the fruit that you're gonna get. If you take it off of one you don't know or you don't like, that's the fruit you're gonna get. Grow it from seed, you don't know what you're gonna get. If you wanna wait four or five years for a fig tree because you grew it from seed, then go ahead and do that. But if you want something you know exactly what you're getting, just get it off of a tree that you like. And like I said, put it in a flower pot, stick it underneath, and when you do that, it's amazing how they will set root and start to grow. They may sit there for six months and you won't be sure, but all of a sudden, you'll see the new leaves start to emerge, especially in the spring. Because remember, fig trees go dormant. So if you're doing it in the winter, or you're doing it when they're not growing, that little stick that you stuck in a pot may just sit there and look like nothing. And then all of a sudden in the spring, you look at the side or you look at the top and you see that little bit of leaf that is green starting to unwind and open. And guess what? You have now created a brand new fig tree off of that branch that you picked off of something you want. And I'm telling you, you're gonna grow a lot of figs because they grow quite quickly because you're not growing from seed. This is not a new plant that had to come up from seed and establish itself. And then in a few years, you might get a fig. This is something off an adult plant that's already throwing. Oh, look at that, hold on. Where'd he go? We have to stop for a minute. That's the California Thrasher. I've never seen him in my angel fountain. He's coming to get a drink. Well, with all that screaming he did, I can imagine. He needs a drink, look at that. I am mesmerized by these birds. They're quite large. The beak is amazing because what it does is it can get deep inside the fruit. If it didn't have such a long beak like that, if it was trying to eat figs like other birds, they get all dirty but he's got such a long beak, both male and females, that they can get deep inside. They can eat the seeds inside the fruit, but their face feathers will stay nice and clean. Look at him, there he goes. So as I was saying, easiest thing to grow, start it when you want, take care of him. Definitely if you can get more than one branch, because you, you never know. I mean, with anything you do, you always want to try propagating. I mean, if you're going to take care of one pot, that's why you want to try getting a few branches, stick them in there. And if they all make it, perfect. You have fig trees to give to your friends. And if they don't all make it, you'll at least know that you'll get your fig tree. I hope I gave you some fun information. Oh, he's back on the other side now singing. And then keep it well watered. And then just wait till you see the first leaves start to emerge. With that, have a wonderful day. And don't forget to eat what you're growing. If you hear that and you're in California, you'll know that beautiful melodious bird is the California Thrasher.